continuing with part two of chapter eight mini lecture. So this is the topic where we stopped purchase discounts. Okay, purchase discount is a contra cost of goods sold account. Purchases discount is a contra, here it is. I can make it a little bigger. It's a contra cost of goods sold account. So minus plus, not normal credit balance. Um, so these are different credit terms. So N30 or net 30 means there is no discount. We have 30 days to pay the invoice. Um, sometimes you will see net 10 EOM. So it's not 10 days from the date of the invoice. It's 10 days from the end of the month. So if the invoice is dated March 27th, we're going to count 10 days from the March 31st end of the month. Uh, this is a discount, right? 2 slash 10 net 30. So I have 30 days to pay the invoice, but if I pay within 10 days, I will get 2% discount. One of the key points here and confusing points, the discount is not given on returns allowances of freight, right? This 2% is only on the cost of merchandise. Less allowances returns, if I made any, and I have to pay freight fully. So do not apply discount on the amount of freight. So here is an example. January 10th, we make a purchase plus freight, $3,200. 2 slash 10 means if I pay within 10 days. So simply add 10 days. January 10th plus 10 is January 20th, including January 20th. So if we pay... Uh, up until January 20th, we're going to get a discount. How much? 2%. Not on the entire amount, only on 3000 So 2% would be $60, right? So simply to get 1%, not to use a calculator, 1%, cross out two zeros, this is 1%, 30 bucks. Double it, that's 2%, $60, not 64 I have to pay freight fully. So there it is. So when I make a payment, I pay off accounts payable. My cash, my check is not $3,200. It's only $3,140, right? Which is 98% of this amount because I get not that amount. It's 98% of uh, merchandise cost. Um, pretty much a plug-in, right? This is what I owe. This is the purchase discounts credit, $60. And again, I explained why it's $60, right? It's only applied on amount of purchases. And the difference plug-in is the amount of cash you pay. Okay, so uh, I want to show you this transaction. So again, we went over numbers one, two, three. This is a return allowance, right? Decreases your AP for transaction five and six. I make a payment, we make a payment within a discount discount period. Like I said, discount is not given on freight or returns allowances. So debit AP, credit purchase discount, credit cash, cash is a plugin. If I pay after a discount period, then there's no purchase discount. The amount of invoice and the amount of cash are the same. So this is your six, these are your six typical transactions. Um, the slide about NDCP, I already covered it in part one. So the net delivered cost of purchases, uh, we put it on, uh, it's a component of the cost of goods sold section on the income statement. And, um, you know, it's simply, like I said, we take purchases at the end of the month, total purchases plus total freight, so the, the, the total or subtotal is called delivered cost of purchases. And then when we subtract contra accounts, it becomes net, net delivered cost of purchases. So I subtract returns allowances. I subtract purchase discounts. So the difference is called MDCP. Okay, posting transactions are uh, very similar to Chapter 7. I'm not going to go much over it we maintain an additional subsidiary ledger called accounts payable ledger. So we have an accounts payable in the general ledger, but that's just a control account. So uh, 
an amount of AP, let's say it's $10,000. Well, that's not enough information. I need to know how much I owe to each specific supplier. So this $10,000, how much, what does it consist of? So the AP ledger gives you separate sub account for every vendor. And it shows the balance we owe them, you know, it's minus plus. When we buy, the balance goes up. When we return or get an allowance, balance would go down. When we pay, it would be debit here, the balance would go down. So when you post AP, it goes to two places. This is the general ledger account payable. And this check mark signifies that I also posted to the modern sportsman in the subsidiary ledger. So it goes into two ledgers. AP goes into two ledgers. So when people say, I work in accounts payable, that's what they do. They just focus on AP. Because it's such an important account, we need to make payments, we need to get discounts, there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, at the end of the month, we take final balances from every vendor and we list every vendor, every supplier, every seller, and we add up all accounts payable. And we want to make sure that that total from the schedule, the total of the individual creditor accounts, suppliers accounts in the subsidiary ledger, is equal to the balance of my control account, accounts payable in the general ledger. So we make sure we add them up, we prepare the schedule, this is the schedule right right here. So I have three vendors. This is how much I owe them. And I get this data from the uh, accounts payable subsidiary ledger. And this is my total AP. And then we look at the general ledger, find AP, and my AP should be the same amount. Because I was posting it into two places, so it allows me a chance to double check and not make any mistakes. And that concludes chapter eight. Uh, so guys, any questions, email me, post them in the ungraded discussion board. Um, but we'll get through one more chapter. Have a good time.